Welcome back to another episode of Navigating the Modern World with Coach Eli, the Daily Walk Edition. This is episode number 32. I'm back at Red Morton Park, and it's right around, you know, 58 to 60 degrees right now. So uh, it's a nice day out here in beautiful Redwood City, California, where I live. And... I have another doozy of a topic here for you folks. This is going to be a real good one, and I'm going to put my own spin on it in ways um, unlike anything you've heard before because I have my opinion about stuff, and it, you know, sometimes goes against many others because I stand on my own. I'm entitled to my own opinion, and uh, that's why I do these videos, and that's why, you know, I run my coaching practice because I have my own beliefs in the ways Uh, that I feel, you know, things uh, should be. And uh, that's just the way uh, I am. So love me or leave me, right? (laughs) So let's get to the topic right now. Let's just get right to it today. Not a lot of other updates going on. The topic of today is Navigating the Modern World with Coach Eli, the Daily Walk Edition, episode number 32 is, Are Codependent Relationships Really That Bad? Well, it depends. Are codependent relationships really that bad? Well, it depends. Interesting topic, right? I'm sure that many of you out there have been in a relationship. And for example purposes, I'm going to be discussing the heterosexual relationship, but this can also apply to homosexual relationships uh, between two men or two women. But because I am heterosexual and my experience is with women, I'm going to talk about, you know, heterosexual relationships here. God, somebody's like really, somebody's like yelling out here. It's just really, really weird. Okay. (laughs) Let me try to not get too distracted here today. I'm going to try to avoid as many people as possible so I can just stick to this message because it is, it is a very, very crucial one. So where do I start with codependency? You know, many heterosexual couples out there that I've talked to or people that I've been in a relationship with uh, the opposite sex have said their relationship ended because they were codependent on each other. There was too much codependency involved, and uh, that just wasn't good for the relationship. And whenever anyone mentions codependency involved in a relationship, whenever they've mentioned it in the past, it's always kind of thrown me off a little bit because... The purpose of a relationship is to be able to count on each other and support each other and grow together, which is pretty much like a dependency within the relationship, okay? And I actually see nothing wrong with that, okay? But it's how you enter the relationship that makes all the difference, Let me explain that here at the beginning, okay? When you enter a relationship between a man and a woman, for example, I'm a man. When I enter a relationship, I need to enter that relationship coming into it as an individual, okay? An individual that's emotionally secure, emotionally strong, emotionally stable, and I'm happy within myself. And I'm happy being alone and being single, but I would prefer to share my life with somebody, okay? Cohabitate, okay? On the flip side, the lady should enter it the same exact way. 
she should be happy with her life and how her life has gone. She should be, you know, emotionally stable, secure within herself, and just all around happy. And what happens when two stable, secure, and happy people get together? They form a bond. And they come together as two individuals to become one. One couple. Okay? If you enter a relationship in that aspect, then in my honest opinion, okay, there is nothing wrong within the relationship to depend on each other for anything and everything. Okay? There's nothing wrong with depending on each other for anything and everything. Okay? But let's just say, for example purposes, that, you know, me as a man, I've had some unresolved issues. This is just for example purposes. Okay? Let's say that, you know, I had attachment issues growing up uh, with my relationship with my mother, my father, or my family. So let's say I have unresolved emotional issues and it affects me in the way that I attach to others. Okay. That type of attachment that stems back to your childhood is going to stay with you throughout your entire life until you figure it out and resolve it. And I actually had, <laughs> you know, those types of issues in the past. And once I figured those issues out, I was able to resolve them and able to, you know, you know, connect with people more securely. But when you have unresolved attachment issues, and let's say me as a man, I go out there and I look for a good female to connect with, Okay. A man in that position is going to be looking for a female to make himself feel better so he can emotionally bond with her and so hang on one second here. So he can emotionally bond with her and feel that emotional security and stability that he hasn't felt his entire life that stems back to his atta attachment trauma issues growing up. Okay? And if that's the case, okay, and you attach to, you know, an emotionally secure and stable woman, you're going to start to like that because you're going to start to feel a genuine emotional bond that you've been so desperately seeking all of your life that you couldn't get through your family or other friends or other people. And you're going to really attach to that woman and you're going to be dependent on her for your emotional security, emotional stability, etc. If that is the case, that is definitely not good. And if you are attaching to a woman that's in the same situation you're in where she's had, you know, um, emotional issues, traumatic emotional issues that stem back to her childhood and they've been unresolved. If both of you are in that situation and you both are attaching because you're dependent on each other for emotional stability and security, that's where a codependency is not good. Because you're not coming into it, both of you are not coming into this relationship being emotionally full, emotionally secure, and emotionally available to really have that real, genuine bond. Okay? I wanted to clear that up at the very beginning of this video, and hopefully that makes sense. So, where I feel it is okay to be emotionally or sorry, to be codependent on somebody, or be dependent on somebody, is when you come into the relationship as an individual and you're happy with or without the other person that you're with. That's the bottom line 
right there. Okay? So now, let's say that you're in a relationship with a woman. I'm a man. I'm in a relationship with a woman. We're both emotionally secure and stable and all that. Things are going great. Now, in today's day and age, like I've mentioned all along, women are in the workforce. Women have been liberated. I know I've kind of drilled that into the ground, but I'm making a point because relationships are different than they used to be. It used to be in the past where the woman was dependent on the man for everything. The woman was dependent on the man to provide shelter, provide food, you know, provide all that while the woman would take care of the house, the kids, etc. Without the man, the woman could not survive. So the dynamic of relationships back then were very different because, again, women were dependent on the man completely for their survival. Nowadays, with women being liberated and doing pretty much exactly the same things that only men once did, it's changed the, dy- the dynamic of relationships to where it's, it's almost kind of like you have two men in a relationship where one of them is a woman. Because any way you look at it, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, any way you look at it, working in the workforce is a masculine trait. Working in the workforce has always been known to be a masculine trait and still is. And many jobs out there that women even do today are more are jobs that require more masculine energy than feminine energy. So even if women are doing these jobs, they're exuding more masculine energy than feminine energy. So what does that do for the dependency in the relationship? It, it shifts everything to the point of where now both men and women are into this with an equal playing ground. Both men and women are working both men and women are providing for their household, etc., yada, yada, yada. Okay? So it almost kind of creates this uh, codependency based on the environment because obviously nowadays the cost of living has gone up everywhere, especially here in the San Francisco Bay Area where I live. And let me tell you, you know, many couples out here that have a family would not be able to survive and raise their family and take care of their family if it wasn't for their dual income. Okay? And I honestly feel that because of the way things are nowadays, both men and women in the relationship, both the man and the woman in the relationship, which is what I'm trying to say, should support each other and be there for each other through thick and thin no matter what. Let me give you an example here. Let's say... You know, you're in a relationship with a woman. You're both working. And let's say that um, you as the man lose your job all of a sudden. It just happened. Sometimes shit happens that's out of your control. It's a job you were working at for a very long time. It's a job that was paying you decent money. It's a job that was providing half of your household's income. Okay? If you lose that job and your other half... Give me one second. People are pulling in here. If you lose that job, okay, and your other half rather than supporting you and helping you through that that rough period of time, attacks you and says, oh, you lost that job because you're a loser. You can't handle your shit. You know, now we're going to be hurting. Now we're in big trouble. We're going to lose the house. We're going to lose everything, right? Some women will react that way. But if you're with the right woman that's with you for the right reason, she's going to stick with you through thick and thin even during a time like that where you lose your job. And what she'll do is she'll say, you know what, babe? You lost your job. Don't worry about it. Let's talk about this and figure out what we're going to do here. Okay? I make this amount of money. We can survive for a few months. We have some savings. You know, we can survive for a few months off of my income, and I have no problem with that. 
I love you. I care about you. I'm here to support you. But what we need to do is focus on helping you find another job as quickly as possible. And I've got your back, babe. That's what the, that's what a good woman would say to to a man that lost his job in that situation. Okay. In that situation, in my opinion, you know the man's going to be feeling shitty, like he can't provide for his family. And remember, he lost his job that was totally out of his control. Sometimes shit happens like that. Okay. So in that case, the man not feeling good should be able to go to his woman for emotional support and comfort in the same ways that she would want emotional support and comfort on the flip side and throughout many various other things that women need emotional comfort for. I guess what I'm trying to say here today is that I don't think it should be a problem for men in their relationships today or marriages today to seek emotional comfort from their woman in certain situations. Because again, the dynamic of relationships have changed and, you know, both men and women are now in the workforce. Women are more liberated. Women are liberated nowadays. And they're more than capable of doing the same exact things that only men once did. So if, if, if we're going to completely make a shift, you know, with women's lib and women wanting to be exactly like men or have the same rights as men, that should stem over to relationships. But in many cases nowadays, in that situation, the man loses his job. Okay, the woman is going to belittle him. The woman is going to get scared. The woman's going to be thinking about herself and and the kids. And, and she's going to start to worry and start to ridicule her man. I've seen this happen to many people. Rather than saying, baby, I've got your back. Let's figure this out. There are very few women out there that are going to you know, respect their man in that way. At the same time, there are very few women out there that understand the way the modern world is. And that if they would want the man to support them in that way, if they went through the same thing, you know, they need to support the man, you know, the same way. That they would want to be supported. That's a better way of putting it. story I want to share here, one of my ex-girlfriends I'm not going to mention which one. Some of you out there may try to figure it out. Um, one of my ex-girlfriends um, that was married for quite a long time um, had a, an ex-husband that after, I think, 15 or 20 years of working a job that he really loved and enjoyed and made decent money at, he lost his job. And when he lost his job, this guy lost his shit. My ex-girlfriend, this particular ex-girlfriend that um, that uh, was married to this guy at the time, told me the story that you know she told him, hey, you know what? I make really good money in my job. She's been self-employed, so or she was self-employed at the time. I still think she is today. And she was making enough money to provide for the family. And she told him that, you know what? She would help him get back on his feet and find a different job that he enjoys. Or if he wanted to go back to school and learn a trade, she was going to pay for it. That's a really good woman right there. I highly respect and appreciate that. About any woman like that. But there, are, <laughs> there aren't that many women that look at it that way. She gave him five years to figure this shit out, and this guy still couldn't figure it out. I would be happy in that situation if any woman even gave me a month or two to figure it out. Most of them would be just pissed off right away and start to worry right away. But this particular woman gave her ex-husband five years, which I think was way the fuck too long. And then she ended up divorcing him, which I totally support her on that. In that situation, I totally support her divorcing this guy because she 
was doing whatever within her power to try to help her husband at the time get back on his feet. She supported him. Hang on one second here. And, and, and that's where I feel codependency or being codependent on each other makes sense. Okay? I think both men and women in relationships today need to support each other through thick and thin. But both also need to make a valid effort if one side is struggling with something. Both need to make a valid effort to change that struggle. If you're the man that's struggling with something, you know, the, the woman should support you and help you, you know, get rid of that struggle. And you as the man need to do whatever it takes immediately and consistently until you fix that struggle. On the flip side, if your woman is struggling, you should help her get back on her feet. And at the same time, she should also do whatever it takes within her power each and every day to get back on her feet, but having your support in the background. You know, your emotional support and possibly even financial support if you're living together, if you're married. Financial support where it makes sense to do so. If you've just started dating a woman for one or two months and she's asking you for financial support... That's not good. She's probably using you because you don't know her long enough. I'm talking about when you've been with somebody for a while and you have time and history with them or you're married to them. Okay? So I really don't see anything wrong with a man and a woman in a relationship being codependent on each other as long as initially when they got together... They were two individuals that were happy within themselves, emotionally full, emotionally stable, and emotionally available when they first started seeing each other. Okay? Once you get into that relationship and you both entered it from a good place, okay, you know, if you start seeing somebody more than six months or a year, maybe after a year or so, maybe you might decide to move in together or become more serious. At that point, you know, you have to look at that as a serious relationship. And if you're going to be investing continuous time with the same person, you've got to also have their back. And they have to have your back through thick and thin. And that just doesn't happen a lot nowadays. It's sad. It's really, really sad. So, I don't know how much more I can uh, talk about this. I think I kind of drilled this into the ground. This might be a short video here today. I may talk about something else here for a little bit because... I don't really like doing short videos. I like doing longer videos. Because here's what I feel long videos do for people. There are people out there that look forward to uh, the messages of certain content creators. When you get hooked on viewing somebody and you like what they have to say, you want more of it. And maybe you have a lonely night at your place because... You were recently dumped. Maybe your friends aren't available. Maybe your family's not available. And you're sitting on your couch and there's nothing good to watch on TV. If I can give you 45 or 50 minutes or an hour of Coach Eli to make you feel better and, and, and help your night, you know, you know, uh, become better and brighter rather than just only doing a 25-minute video or 20-minute video, I'd love to do that for you. I definitely would love to do that for you. It's the kind of person that I am. I love to give. I love to help people. I love to extend the olive branch. What else can I talk about here today? I'm just going to fucking say it because I really don't give a shit. (laughs) 
before I started recording this video, I want to see I want to see how closely certain people out there are viewing me. Before I started recording this video, I checked out my YouTube feed. And guess what? Lo and behold, lo and behold, the people that uh, have been starting to talk about me again on YouTube and you know critique me and criticize me and kick me down are at it again because they have nothing fucking better to do. <laughs> and I'm going to sit here and continue to laugh at this shit. Because in all honesty... I feel that I keep hearing things. What am I hearing? In all honesty, I feel that uh, besides the content that I do that provides them, you know, the ability to critique and, and have something to do, their content is shit. You heard me say it. I'm just going to come out and call these guys out and say, look, your content must be so shitty, which it is, to the point of where, you know, you guys need someone like me to talk about because I give you lots to talk about because I talk about a lot of things. I'm not afraid to speak my voice. Okay? If you guys could create your own brand and create enough material to self-sustain yourselves, you wouldn't need to talk about Coach Eli. I personally don't have a problem that you're talking about Coach Eli. I'm actually loving this. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. The more you guys talk about me, I love it. I'm not mentioning your names. You guys know who you are. And some of you may be thinking I'm feeding into this. I'm really not. I'm just, I'm getting off on it, just like you guys do. I'm getting off on it because it's funny to me how much of a hold and control I have of you guys. <laughs> it's funny. For those of you that are new to my videos, like I've been mentioning past week or so, there's a small group of guys on YouTube that stem back to the former channel I used to run before I shut it down about four months ago. And... Wow, there's an ambulance that's coming really, really fast. I guess there's some activity happening over here. Whoa, boy, oh boy. The park is right by the fire station and the ambulance station, so sometimes that happens here. Anyway, like I was saying, I'm not feeding into you guys. I'm just kind of laughing along with you guys or maybe laughing at you guys because... If you guys had, you know, better things to do and more content to do, and if I didn't intrigue you as much as I do, whether you think I'm stupid or smart or whatever, it doesn't matter. You guys feel I'm relevant enough. Listen to, the, listen to these words. You guys feel I'm relevant enough to talk about me. And all you're fucking doing is blowing up my ego through the fucking roof. Through the roof. Talk all the shit you want. And yeah, I'll watch it when I do my walks. Because there, you know, besides the content I put out there, there isn't a whole hell of a lot of good other, other, other good content, which is what I'm trying to say. So I'll listen to your shit while I take my walk. And I'll get a good laugh at it. Just like you guys see me as entertainment in your eyes, I see you guys as entertainment. Okay. But again, like I was saying, for those of you out there that just started watching my videos, yeah, there's a group of guys on, on Facebook that have been following me since my previous channel. And they're, they're pretty much a bunch of, um, a lot of them are emotionally unstable. Um, some of them are um, just immature. They're very bitter about their past relationships. They have emotional issues um, that probably stem back to their childhood. Or their relationship with their parents. They've got issues. And they, and they just choose to not address their issues. They, they come onto YouTube to wreak havoc. To re, reap havoc. Is which is what I'm trying to say. Not wreak. Reap ha havoc. I can't even talk. Okay. I 
tried helping these guys in the past, but all I did was get me in trouble. All I did was, you know, ruin my brand. And now I'm just using it for example purposes of what not to be. I'm only addressing it here in this video because it, it cracks me up that sometimes, <laughs> sometimes people that appear to be your worst enemies love you more than anyone. Like I mentioned before, I think these guys have a love-hate relationship with Coach Eli. Okay. But, <laughs> but it is what it is. I'm going to start walking back to my car right now and dropping this off. How long have we gone for? We have gone for just 30 minutes. For the first time in quite some time, <laughs> I don't really have a whole hell of a lot to say today. And that's kind of odd with me. I usually have a lot to talk about each subject. But today it's like, I don't know. I'm just feeling like enjoying the nice day out here at the park. I will grab my jacket when I go to my car because I am recording this um, around 3.30 in the afternoon. And around 4 o'clock, it starts getting cold. The sun, the sun starts going down around, you know, shortly after 4 and sets around 4.50. And it just gets chilly at night. So I'll grab my jacket there. But, yeah, I don't know what's going on with me today. You know, typically I have a lot more to say. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just having an epitome of... Um, you know, just wanting to feel calm all of a sudden and uh, not overly project things. Maybe I'm becoming a little bit more humble. I don't know. But let me just... Well, let me move over here because I think somebody was talking loud on the phone over there by their house. There are a lot of homes that are adjacent to the park. Let me take this opportunity here to say a few more things before I wrap it up. I would love to connect with you. Um, if you haven't already connected with me, if you're a good person that's just down to earth and wants to learn about the modern world and go on a journey with me, Okay. I'm not here to sell you anything. I do have my paid coaching services, but I don't push them upon anyone. That's optional for you to go to my website at coachtitalizedmouse.com and check it out. But, you know, I would love to connect with you. If you find me on YouTube and you've noticed that I have comments disabled and um, pretty much there's, there's no way to communicate uh, on the channel because I've disabled everything due to all of these people I was talking about a few moments ago. They're basically trolls. If you go in the description section of those videos, you'll see other places you can connect with me. On my Facebook business page at facebook.com forward slash life coach Eli, the same videos are there and you can comment there. Or you can go to my website at coachtitalizedmalice.com and actually create a free account. And you can comment on those videos, the same videos there that are embedded uh, in the section titled Relationship Sanctuary Blog. All of my videos are on my website as well. Okay, so please connect with me. Okay, if you're somebody that I've actually interviewed in the past or connected with on YouTube in the past or in some other capacity and we're not Facebook friends and I know who you are, send me a Facebook friend request and then after you send me that friend request, send me a, a private message on Facebook Messenger letting me know who you are. And I'd love to connect with you even more closely. If I know who you are, I would love to be Facebook friends with you and share even more of my personal life with you. Now, most of my stuff I'm putting out there right now is public, so anyone can go out there and check it out, whether we're Facebook friends or not. But it would be great to just you know, have that closer connection with people that I've 
closely connected with in the past, but kind of lost touch with since, you know, I closed out, I closed down my former YouTube channel. When I closed down my former YouTube channel, I lost touch with a lot of people and I've been trying to reconnect with the good people that I want to stay connected with. And slowly over the course of time, um, I've been uh, reconnecting with many of you. So appreciate that. Uh, also, if you would like to submit your personal story in regards to something that you may be experiencing that you need help with, you need advice on, okay, whether it involves a dating relationship that, that you're having struggles in, whether it involves a marriage, whether it involves, you know, your job in the corporate world or you're trying to become an entrepreneur. I just got wet by a sprinkler here. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> Send me an email at sanctuary, S-A-N-C-T-U-A-R-Y, at coachedelifesmelis.com. That's sanctuary, S-A-N-C-T-U-A-R-Y, at coachedelifesmelis.com. And share your story with me, you know, in three to four paragraphs or so. And put in as many details as possible. You can remain anonymous. That's totally up to you. Oh, God, two policemen just burned rubber on this residential street, which is a 25 zone. So there's something, there's something going on somewhere around here. There's some crazy activity happening. So sorry for the distractions. But yeah, you can remain anonymous or you can, you know, request for me to use your real name or your, just your first name. And if your story is well-written with spelling, grammar, punctuation, etc., you know. And I feel it is something that would benefit my entire audience. I will respond to you in a video for free. So that's the way I coach people for free. People that write well-written emails in regards to their situation. So I can do a video. You have to give me permission to do a video on it. So I can do a video on your situation, respond to you with the best advice possible. And allow my audience to learn through your experiences at the same time. Interesting. There's a fire truck here at the park. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is going on here today. But anyway, I think this video has gone on <laughs> much longer than it should have kind of rambling right now just trying to lengthen this video so you folks out there that love the longer videos can have a little more of coach eli a little more of coach eli love it looks like the activity where all those cops and fire trucks were heading to is right here in the same parking lot where my car is parked at I don't know if somebody had a heart attack or something. Uh, I mean, um, there is a senior center. Sorry, there is a senior center um, right on the premises of Red Morton Park. So there are a lot of senior citizens out here. So hopefully whatever's going on over there, back over there, which I don't know if you can see, like back over there is, uh, I hope the person is okay. All right, so I'm going to start wrapping this up here. Um, my YouTube channel is growing, actually. I almost have 30 subscribers, believe it or not. I'm not even asking for subscribers, but now I'm going to start asking for subscribers. Subscribe to me on YouTube. You know, share these videos if you feel people would, uh, you know, gain some benefit from viewing them. Okay? Help spread the word out you know, regarding what I'm trying to do because I'm really trying to help each and every one of you navigate through this modern world, this crazy modern world we live in as best as possible. There isn't a lot of information out there on how to navigate it properly. There's information out there on how, you know, women can, you know, women are empowered and how women, you know, are in the workforce and, you know, how women are equal to men now. There's a lot of talk about that. Everything is like favored. Every, everything, yeah, everything's favored towards women nowadays. And there isn't a lot of stuff out there regarding men or men and women as a couple. 
So not many people out there are really talking about how to navigate this modern world today in regards to dating relationships and, and other aspects. Okay? And that's what I'm here to do through my own personal experiences. Okay? And the reason why you don't um, see a lot of people out there talking about this is because a lot of people are afraid to put their their real selves out there. They they're embarrassed by you know they're they're embarrassed by what they've been through. I'm not embarrassed by what I've been through. I've learned from it and I want you folks to learn from it as well. Okay. And yes, do I get some you know, scrutiny and crazy feedback from some crazy trolls on YouTube and other areas? Have people rebut my message? Have people trolled me and given me shit? Absolutely. But that's to be expected with anyone that's going to be as open and honest as I am. You got to understand that these trolls out there, the only reason why they criticize someone like me is because they wish they could be as open as I am and do what I do as, cons as consistently as I do it the jealousy factor. I'm just being honest with you. Okay, so there's nobody else out there like Coach Eli that's going to share everything with you raw and real and get to the point and do whatever it takes to help you navigate through this crazy modern world as easily as possible. And that's where I'm going to end this video here today at 41 minutes. That being said, have a great, great night, everyone, and I will see you all soon. See you soon. Bye-bye now.